get a younger grip. I do, yes. Because Terry, in those days, I was, you know, I was grotesquely fat. Like and, I am today. And I was always <laughs> taking off my clothes as, in those as days still, as well, yeah. as I still do. Yeah. Now I look at the cinema and I think, God, look at that, you see, I'm quite thin now. Well, I'm the other way around, you see. When I see the young ones, I think, cool, look at that attractive young bloke. This is self-delusion, isn't it? <laughs> On a major scale. Do you get a lot of abuse as, as Vivian, as Viv? Did if you... anyone else asks me, where are your stars, I shall punch them in the face. <laughs> <laughs> where are your stars? Where are your stars? <laughs> <laughs> Give him a chance, for God's sake. Now, you've got to be, be before we go on to, to other things, I know you're involved in something going to happen on the weekend. What's that? Yes, sir. Uh, I know Griff's Well, Griff's involved as well. Involved as well. Yes. We're both involved in this benefit for um, a charity called the Medical Foundation for the Care of Victims in Torture, hmm. uh, which is a bit of a mouthful. But it's, uh, it's an offshoot of, of amnesty. You know, the main thrust of amnesty is to get people out of, out of prisons. Yeah. And the Medical Foundation, the main aim is to, is to care for them once they get here. I mean... This torture thing is disgusting. Um, I don't know whether you know, but one in three governments in the world still practice torture. And most of the people who are tortured obviously die. And of those that escape, a few of them get to Britain. And, um, Does this medical... government practice torture? Um, that's debatable, actually. But um, <clears throat> the Medi Medical Foundation actually um, helps these people who have been obviously mm. wounded physically and emotionally to sort of build their lives back together. So it's going to be an important thing. It'll be yeah. well supported, I mean, obviously. I'd, I'd like if I could to tell you a case history, because I think it, it, it rams home the point about what, why this charity exists. And I should, I should say this. Is, this is a bit um, nasty, so if you're of a particularly squeamish disposition, I, I, I'd turn off the sound for a minute. It involves a, a Ugandan boy who was, when he was 15, the police arrived at his house, and they dragged all his family out into the street, and they shot every member of his family in front of his eyes. He was then... Um, carted off to prison to a cell about as big as this sofa in which there were 30 other people. So you couldn't actually lie down, you had to stand like this. And every day he was taken out and systematically tortured. Um, this, this poor man had um, a rubber tyre from a car hung round his neck and set on fire. He had the hot plates off a stove while they were still red hot placed on each side of his face. And the worst thing, and I find this quite upsetting, um, the worst thing was at the end of every day, I mean, there was, there was a lot of people coming in here and a lot of people dying each day. The worst thing is, at the end of every day, they used to take everyone out of this cell and split them into two teams. This is a sadistic game. Give one team a hammer, and number one with the hammer would stand up, and number one from the other team would come over, and number one would have to smash this other guy in the head until he died. And if he didn't do that, he would, um, he would have to kneel down and the other guy would get the hammer. So, so that's what we're working for, um, to help people who have had that sort of... Well, we hope, well, I'm sure it's going to be very well supported and well, yeah. well worth doing. Are they... You can, you can <clears> start <throat> listening again now, folks. <laughs> no, no, that was... Over. I, thank you for telling me. That was worth hearing and gives well, a, I think gives it's a important reason to, what to, you're doing, to, to so. understand why, why these charities exist. I mean, there's a, there's a great deal going on in, in charities altogether. Yes. And, and this, is, this is not a very sexy charity. I mean, this is a, a used phrase. Uh, some charities are sexy because they're, they're obvious. Um, yes. And, and, but still absolutely needed. But this charity is, is having a bit of trouble and, and we're trying to raise support. I mean, it's, there's 50 voluntary doctors, psychotherapists, psychoanalysts working for this organisation. They've got 1,200 patients this year and they haven't got the room. And all, all we're trying to do is, is raise the money so they can treat these people. Yeah, but is Griff going to be on stage taking Why, his clothes off again? Uh, I'm, I'm, I am going to be on, but as far as I know, so far, I'm not going to Well, well Griff doesn't off. know this, actually, but um, <laughs> I, I'm exploding my trousers on the show. Oh, good. Um, <clears throat> which is not unusual, but I'm going to be wearing them at the time. And oh. Griff doesn't know, but I'm actually going to be exploding his trousers as well. Oh, well, oh isn't that? No, it's, it's, it's a tremendous It's, 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 it's nice to know that. It's lovely to have these yeah. supportive people, because yes. I'm, I'm without any ideas at all for what to do for the show, but now I know I shall go on, With, and my trousers and, will explode. And you will turn into that their own volition. Tremendous. Yeah, and that's going to be, you call that an act? Because your it? trousers exploding? <laughs> what else I'm are you afraid going to do? I do. What else are you going to do? Um, no, that's, that's about, that's the act, is it? about the length and the breadth of it. But there's got to be more than that, then, is there? Yeah, oh, there's, there's, the, there's the Hollies, the Oblivion Boys, um, Jim Diamond, Richard Bryars. I'm going to be exploding his trousers. Yeah. Wins, oh, yeah. there's Wins. There's uh, Pauline Collins. And Clive Anderson. Yeah. Clive Anderson and... I'm looking forward to exploding Pauline Collins' trousers. It'll end at about four in the morning, as most of these things do. Yes. Well, now, you've, to talk about you for a moment, did more comic strip? 
Uh, yes, we've got, we've got some more comic strip things coming out. We've just done one called the GLC, which is quite amusing. Um, we'll be the judge of that. <laughs> well, well, I think it's quite amusing. Um, it's a sort of Hollywood treatment of the GLC. We did one on the miners' strike last year. And in this one, Dawn French plays um, Cher playing uh, Joan Ruddock. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie Coltrane is playing Charles Bronson playing Ken Livingston. Uh, Jennifer's playing um, Bridget Nielsen playing the Ice Maiden, Mrs Thatcher. And I'm playing William Hurt playing uh, Prince Charles, the Potty Prince. It's a shootout in a car chase. We should look forward to that with ill concealed delight, I can tell you. And then you've got this news hound thing which doesn't come out for a while. That's another new thing for you, because you either you either play timid or very aggressive. Do I, Terry? Well you do. You're you're quiet now. And I want to keep you that way. And I want to wish you good luck with the benefit. Can I just say the benefit is is at the Victoria Palace on Sunday, and if you want to get a ticket, it's three double eight eight two oh four. Thank you very much. Who said? It always makes me laugh at people who criticise this show, talking about the plugs and all the rest of it. You know, I mean, it's so silly. But anyway, that was worth talking about. I hope it's a great success. All right. Now, so if you just push up a bit, because we're now going to... No, don't, don't, no, don't get off. Just, just... Cooperate up the settee, the chaise long. Quite a way. <laughs> no, not that. There's well, no need to. Man, there's no need to sit that close together. <laughs> and we'll be greeting Rob C. Nesbitt's alter egos, the actor and star of Naked Video, Gregor Fisher. <laughs> Plenty of room for me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think they thought you were probably coming out as the as your man again. Well, see, they didn't want to sort of rub shoulders when they can probably catch a disease or something. Do you think we're going to get inundated with with letters of and phone calls of complaint from Scotland that you weren't showing up the best side of Scottish culture? When, what kind of reaction do you get from Scotland on on old Rab C? Well. Um... You mean you're talking about stereotypical Scots and things? So uh, you're letting um, the side down. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, uh, I, I'm no, sorry, I was he Scottish? Yes, he was Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> it's frightful, isn't it? No, uh, I don't get any bad reactions. Well, it's, it's quite the opposite. People seem to quite like him, really. Do you think he's a fair stereotype? Are there people. There's nobody left like that in Scotland. Scotland is a, Glasgow is a garden city. I think there are people like uh, like Nesbit sort of parading about the place everywhere. Really, you can go to Victoria bus station and there'll be one Nesbit ranting at the moon. You know, you, you know the <laughs> Manchester. I don't think there's anything typical. But Glasgow Scotsman. is the cultural city of Europe. Indeed, it is. And and garden city. <laughs> oh yes. Uh -huh. yeah. You don't get a straight razor down Socky Hall Street anymore. No, no, that's all sort of. I mean, I've lived in a lot of places, but, you know, actors are kind of, I tell them, they're always living somewhere, but um, I, I, I've lived in Brixton's, Manchester's. I've had more trouble in the Outer Hebrides than I've ever had in Glasgow, you know what I mean? It's just, all that is, it's all gone, that, uh, it's all past. You've got a character from the Outer Hebrides, haven't you? What, the fellow who, who presents the programme of the Outer Hebrides. Yes, Gus, yes, uh -huh, I but, have. Who's, who's kind loose, of... loosely based on... Uh, <laughs> On the kind I, of I probably won't be able to speak to my family again, but <laughs> on a relative of mine, Terry. Yeah. Yes. Who? Uh, Donald McIntyre, who's a who's a farmer who, who lives in Tyree. There you are, folks. <laughs> there you, you can are. Never go back never home. Never speak to me again. That's me at the will. <laughs> yeah. But you do get people like that. The fellows who sing. You feel that they're going to sing a folk song if you're not very careful. Oh, I think so. Yes, I think they're pretty true to life, Gus. Yeah. Mm. BBC Scotland is, has quite a lot of people like that around, hasn't it? Bearing in mind you'd like to work there again. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's one particular chap who's a, a, like, a bit like that up in, uh, in BBC Scotland, yes. I can't be drawn on this table. No, no, he's the control. I can't be drawn on this table. I can't be drawn on this table. I can't be drawn on this table. I want to hear the truth. <laughs> there must There's be something people else. People like yeah. that down here, too, the DG. Yeah, oh, really? Yeah. Mm. He's a drunkard, isn't he? Well, he likes to drink. Mm. He likes to drink. There's no idea. <laughs> What sort of people do you look for? What sort of people do you look for in your characterization? I mean, do you, like the rest of the boys, do you pick taxi drivers? You can never travel in a taxi again. <laughs> I mean, do you pick things out of people, if you pardon the expression? Well, I don't actually. I mean, I suspect the, the, the boys um, are more clever at this than, than I am, but I'm basically an actor, and uh, <laughs> people and very talented writers like Ian Patterson write it for me, and I just say it, really. Mm. 
I'd love to say I was terribly clever and, and lurked about street corners and said, oh, well, that's a good thing, and I'll do that, and I'll do that, but I don't. I just open the page, and if it's on the page, I say it, and if it's not, I can't, really. Well, look, it's good to have you here, and thanks for doing that, Scott Sack. That was terrific. Good. Gregor, and Aid. Cheers. And Griff, thank you. another week of, of high standing talk gone west have a happy and a wholesome weekend i'll see you on monday at seven and since we were talking about uh, worthwhile things this day next week we'll have children in need i hope you'll dig deep in your pockets for that as well and good luck to your thing on sunday as well thanks for coming thank you for joining us have a nice weekend in a pillowcase. Plain or Oxford. Um, as I say, I'm fed up. Victoria Wood, Physical Jerks and a star-studded cast. A brand new series of comedy dramas by Victoria Wood starting Thursday on BBC One. So do watch it, unless you're busy. You may have some fluff to extract from the back of your spin dryer, or you may be having a row. I don't mind. It's only television. <laughs>